In the battle of the guys, do you stumble or fall? With the rise in popularity of free-to-play party games, one took an early lead in the category, Fall Guys. But does its main competitor, Stumble Guys, actually outshine the OG? I've broken this video up into the categories on screen, with a summary at the end. As always, the most in-depth analysis is found throughout the video. Fall Guys was released in August 2020 on Steam for $20, and later was exclusively available on Epic Games made free-to-play. Stumble Guys was released in September 2020 to the Android Play Store, and later in 2021 to Steam. With both games releasing within one year of each other on Steam, each title has targeted the same player bases, especially with both games pulling ahead as 1 and 2 in the casual online multiplayer category. Speaking of the player bases... Steam is king when it comes to accurate player base statistics thanks to this website. Even after its removal from Steam, Fall Guys is still seeing an average player base in the 2,000 player range, while StumbleGuys sees this in the range of 8 to 9,000 players. Still, that does not take into account two key markets, which are the most important for each individual game, Epic Game Store and mobile platforms, respectively. Due to their own privacy stance, neither Epic nor mobile platforms give active player base numbers on the game. Regardless, it can be assumed that both are much higher than their Steam player bases. StumbleGuys has been downloaded hundreds of millions of times, and back in 2021, it was boasting having 18 million daily players. I will put an asterisk on this, because daily players isn't defined. For example, are they just clicking on the app? Or is this the number of players in each game multiplied by the number of games per day, allowing individuals to be counted multiple times? Fall Guys, on the other hand, is played by many players on the Epic Game Store, as that is the active publisher of the game now. While I do not have exact data, it is still in the top 20 most played games on the Epic Game Store, among other giants such as Fortnite and Genshin Impact. Both games are now available on PlayStation and Xbox, with Fall Guys available on the Nintendo Switch. So, while there is not definitive data, it seems that StumbleGuys is taking the lead in the number of players it has at any given time playing its game. It's no surprise that both games have very similar gameplay. Both feature variable speed options but no true sprint option, a jump and dive mechanic, and the ability to emote. Both are platformers with various challenges and have a ragdoll mechanic where you lose control of your character. However, huge differences between each title's gameplay begin with opponent interactions. Fall Guys has a specific grab mechanic that can be used to hold other players back, keep them from jumping, or grabbing and throwing various health items. Being able to grab opponents in the base controls allows for the players to learn how to play offense and, I stress, defense in various levels that can be tedious, like some fruit or jump showdown. In addition to this, you are also able to push items like paddles or balls in Fall Guys while this is not an option in StumbleGuys. I must stress the defensive aspect of grabbing and being able to jump out of grabs because in StumbleGuys the opponent interactions lie within the emotes. Some of the emotes that are available to affect your opponents are punching, slapping, throwing a ball, or even a d20 die to ragdoll them. If you do not own any of these emotes, however, it makes it impossible to mess up your opponents while still being at the mercy of what they can do to you. On the subject of opponent interaction, I must note that the base emotes in StumbleGuys can't impact opponents. Therefore, the game is quite literally pay to win, because having the ability to get other players out without them making a mistake is extremely powerful. A remedy to this would be to give every player an option to punch other players within the base set of emotes. Why this wasn't in the main release I am not completely sure, but I am sure that it is very frustrating to play without any defensive options. Moving on to another large but possibly overlooked difference between the games, momentum and friction. I'll define momentum here as the distance traveled after removing player input, be it in the air or on the ground. Friction, for the purposes of this video, refers to the time it takes the player to stop on the ground after no input is provided from the player. Both games have a similar amount of respective momentum compared to the size of the levels. However, Fall Guys has a much higher friction value, allowing the player to stop on a dime, quote unquote. StumbleGuys, on the other hand, has a lower friction value, making it more challenging to stop where you want to. This leads the player to feel more on ice when playing StumbleGuys, and switching between the two games can be confusing at first. The reason I bring up momentum and friction is that both titles are platformers, meaning you are challenged by the controls and forces to make certain jumps or dives. If the game has a higher sticking point to jumps, it feels a lot more consistent and clean. For me personally, if I'm playing a platformer that requires precision, I want to stick the landings and not feel like I'm going to slide off the edge while making a jump. But is this not a problem for you, or does it just pose different challenges to overcome? Let me know in the comments below. The final point I want to make in this part is the downtime between levels and matches. 
In this category, Stumble Guys is the clear winner due to the speed at which you can start a new game. This way, when you fail or rage quit, the action's almost picked up immediately. Fall Guys, it just feels slow and a bit clunky to get in and out of shows, even with the new repeat show button. Overall, due to the similar gameplay mechanics but key differences in player interactions, mechanics, and lower inertia, Fall Guys is the clear winner here for me. The level designs in each game are fairly unique, even though certain levels are extremely similar. The total number of developer-created levels for each game can be shown on screen. Both games also bolster their total numbers, with the players being able to create their own levels with developer-provided design tools. I will not be going into which game has better tools, as they are both being updated constantly. Fall Guys has certain levels that are exclusive to its own gameplay mechanics. The grabbing mechanic, for example, is especially shown off in the Penguin Challenges and the Snowball Rolling Game Mode, as you can see. A throwing mechanic is also showcased in survival levels, where you can throw blast balls to try and get opponents or teammates out. Stumble Guys, on the other hand, has its own unique mechanic-driven levels, like driving Hot Wheels cars and a match involving hitting other players with various nerf blasters to get them out. Other levels, like the Tetris Tumble Finale and Rush Hour, give Stumble Guys just a bit of edge in creativity. Be it recency bias or true superiority, I believe that Stumble Guys maps were much better than Fall Guys, even if they were a bit more glitchy. They were mostly unique from one another and provided a fair bit of challenge in completing them. While not necessarily affecting the gameplay, I want to dive a bit deeper into the collectible variety each game has. By collectible, I want to be clear that this is anything you can unlock with any in-game currency. In both cases, this includes skins, emotes, badges, borders, and more. Starting with Stumble Guys, the quality of the skins was what stood out to me at first. The legendary and special skins have a high amount of creativity and polish, especially when you consider how many there are. It seems to me that they have a better base model to build off of and are more willing to quote, break the rules when it comes to what is acceptable. In addition to the skins, the emotes have the ability to change the players into different objects, like a volleyball, or to perform an additional jump. Pay to win aside, the emotes are very impressive for what you're allowed to do. From the standpoint of Fall Guys, the skins are high quality with the addition to mix and match a top and bottom together. You can change the base color of your guy, but many patterns are behind paywalls. The title cards where your name is displayed can also be changed, albeit with the limited selection that the devs have created. Emotes are also available, but these are a lot harder to obtain and are cosmetic. Stumble Guys again pulls ahead as the clear winner here. They go above and beyond what they provide and the skins are extremely creative. It really makes a player want to spin over and over again at some of the most impressive skins the game has to offer. When starting my Stumble Guys journey, I was blown away by the amount of collabs that they created for the game. Mr. Beast, Hot Wheels, TMNT, I think, SpongeBob, Looney Tunes, and much more. The list goes on and on, and I'm still surprised by the quality of content that they have to make it feel unique to the game you are playing. In SpongeBob, they have a level that seems to fit like it's from the first movie with the helmets taking over the world. And the Flying Dutchman ship is really well made. The racetrack levels for Hot Wheels feels like you're actually in the miniature cars. The Mr. Beast levels pose quite a bit of challenge and is a neat way to bring light to a collab without just offering the skins alone. Within Fall Guys, however, the collabs are much more conservative. They are mostly skin focused, with the very few levels being designed around some of the collabs. It makes it easier to satisfy certain players being able to play as characters from SpongeBob but it removes any immersion from within the IP because at the end of the day, it's still just the same levels. For this reason, Stumble Guys is vastly superior when it comes to collaborating with other IPs. The overall winner for this part is Stumble Guys by a landslide. The creativity in levels and skin design, as well as the immense variety, heavily outperforms Fall Guys and is frankly mad impressive. To start off other notable mentions, I would like to look at how you can purchase skins through microtransactions. I understand that this could be a factor when comparing games that are not free to play, but because there are no longer an initial investment needed to play their games, you don't have to spend any money whatsoever. I'm astounded at how unintuitive it is to purchase the skin you want in StumbleGuys. After paying for the StumbleGuys in-game currency, gems, you then need to purchase a wheel spin where the skin you want might be located. There, you have a slim chance to get that skin, while a much greater chance to get a random skin that you likely didn't even know existed. This adds a gotcha mechanic to a cosmetic aspect to a free-to-play game, which is astounding. If there's a skin that I want, I expect to be able to pay for the skin directly, not to pay for a chance to get the skin. There are ways to earn gems throughout the gameplay, but there's not any other way to purchase any individual skin. Therefore, the only way to get the skin that you want is by a random chance of spinning the wheel. Within Fall Guys, skins are rotated in and out of the shop. If you see another player with a skin that you want, there's no guarantee that you'll be able to find it in the shop immediately, 
but there are ways to see what's upcoming through different third-party websites. For this round, it's a big dub to the Fall Guys model. If I wanted to purchase a cosmetic in any free-to-play game, I'd want to make sure it's one that I actually want, not just a rare or better skin that I get no choice on the matter. Do you agree, or do you think that spinning a wheel is actually fun? There are just a few quality of life changes that I think need to be made in each game. For Stumble Guys, the need to invite the squad after each game is really annoying. In addition to this, it really is not fully controller supported, meaning sometimes you have to use your mouse and keyboard just to be able to select certain things on the menu when you're using the computer. In addition to this, it has a lot of very obnoxious pop-ups constantly popping up even after some matches, not just loading them. For Fall Guys, the unintuitive AI and the title screen can be a bit much, like using the bumpers or different keys to see different tabs and not being able to just scroll over to them with the D-pad or with the mouse. Uh, the friends list requires a mouse and keyboard still, so I'm saying that this one does not have full controller support yet. And you really can't save uh, skin loadouts. You can only favorite your skins, but you really have no profiles that you can save them to. So if you like extremely creative levels, unique and rule-breaking skins and emotes, and a quick pick-up and put-down game, StumbleGuys is probably your best bet, especially for those on the go using mobile. For those that prefer a more polished gameplay and cosmetics you can choose, Fall Guys is far superior than StumbleGuys. Regardless of your preferences though, both games are quite fun in their own right and I would encourage anyone looking for a relaxed party game to give both a shot to see what you like better. For myself, Fall Guys is still a clear winner and which game I would choose to spend the most of my time with. So that's it. Do you agree with me? If not, why am I super wrong? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.